So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. Today I would like uh, to answer a very interesting question, um, which is related uh, to the advancement and the development of microscopy. I would like to read out the question first. It's a little bit longer uh, than usual. And then uh, I'll give you my opinion on, on this issue. So let's start off. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, the, for the outstanding videos. The amount of them and the quality are truly outstanding. I'm just starting out this, in this hobby and you have taught me volumes. Well, first of all, thank you, of course, uh, for the nice feedback. I have a somewhat theoretical question that I don't believe has been discussed in your videos. I'm an amateur photographer and have been uh, and have seen over the years how lens design and camera electronics, uh, for example, stabilization, have changed to make pictures sharper and give better resolution. Is there any talk about improving the resolution of microscopes in this way so that it would be possible to see at a much higher magnifications and also at higher resolutions? Perhaps a new lens design or integration of electronic sensors into the microscope itself? Is this a question of money? Is it too expensive? Uh, the limits of optical resolution at the higher magnifications or lack of need uh, to mention a few possible issues? Any thoughts would be appreciated. Again, thanks for your hard work and ex excellent informative videos. So first of all, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, so in brief, uh, are there any further developments in microscopy to be expected in the future? Um, are we going to get a better resolution, higher magnifications in light microscopy? Yeah, so what are the developments? Short answer, um, concerning resolution and magnification, the theoretical limit has already been reached a long time ago. Um, I read somewhere at the beginning of the 20th century even, this is when already microscope optics were good enough um, that the microscopes reached the diffraction limit. And this is the resolution limit of what is physically possible. Ernst Abbe, an important uh, um, person relating to the theory of microscopes, he already came up with a formula and which uh, stated that there is a certain resolution limit what microscopes are able to resolve. It depends on the physics of light. Um, and this resolution limit has already been reached long time ago. So where can we still uh, see developments in optical microscopy? Well, um, developments do happen. Um, back in 2014, I think, a Nobel Prize was awarded uh, because in the development of light microscopy, this is so-called the super resolution microscopy, pretty advanced stuff using fluorescent uh, markers. Um, the team um, was able to bypass this diffraction limit. The diffraction limit still applies, it's a physical law, um, but uh, by um, using fluorescent microscopy, he, he was able to bypass it and using computers and image uh, um, processing and so on. And it is now possible to resolve structural details which are below um, the resolution limit. But this is a, a fancy advanced stuff which is not really, um, does not really apply to hobby microscopy. So very specific area of, um, you know, on, of application. Um, since the 1980s, 1990s, there was an interesting development and that was the introduction of so-called infinity optics, um, which uh, allows you, uh, microscopes uh, to be built a little bit larger uh, than uh, previously. And, and uh, even and those infinity optics, uh, some people say, this, wow, uh, there is an improvement in, in image quality. Um, but this improvement in image quality this is not because this in, these infinity optics automatically give you a better resolution because they're infinity optics, but rather because um, at the same time, Time, there was also a much development uh, in glass uh, manufacturing, glass chemistry, I would say, and it's now possible to make lenses uh, on optical elements with refractive indices, which were they could not make before. So it is now possible with modern manufacturing techniques to, um, yeah, to to make things possible, um, and, yeah, and to make uh, optics possible that were difficult to manufacture before. Um, maybe highly refractive um, yeah, glasses with highly refractive index. I mean, I'm very nearsighted, for example. Um, I remember that when I was uh, smaller, my, my glasses that I had to wear were much thicker. Um, and in the meantime, the glasses are much thinner and now I'm wearing contacts. <laughs> yeah, so there has been a lot of uh, optical development in materials uh, development as well. Um, and uh, apparently even it's uh, also uh, when you do a little bit of research, um, I don't have this comparison now, but some people are saying if you compare those very cheap optic uh, microscope optics that you can buy now um, yeah, on very cheap microscopes, and you, if you compare those with the more expensive optics of the, let's say, 1960s, 1970s, then even those extremely cheap optics these days are much better than some of the optics of 
back of the, in the day, yeah? simply because of, of better, um, you know, of more modern manufacturing. But it, this is basically not because um, of um, and the passing of the resolution limit, but this is a, re a reduction of internal reflections, for example, stray light, um, yeah, and other things like this. So, um, what about the integration of electronics into microscopes? Um, Generally, um, uh, microscopes are analog devices, but the only way, one of the few ways of electronics are integrated is, is now um, the light lighting system. And now uh, there have uh, more and more popular are LEDs, light emitting diodes, to be used as a lighting source instead of halogen. Halogen was very popular, still is popular in some areas, um, but uh, these days more and more and more microscopes have uh, LEDs because it's a cool light, less infrared, um, it's not as quite as hot, less electricity is being used. And um, this development um, was a little bit, I would say, uh, seen not quite well, critical at the beginning. No, critical is not the right word, but some people still preferred halogen. And the reason is, is because the, the color spectrum of LEDs was um, basically a little bit too cold, too bluish, and therefore the stains um, of some slides were not represented properly. So if people were trained of using halogen on halogen microscopes, then and they used looked at the same specimen using LEDs. Then there was a color change in the staining, and for diagnosis, this apparently was a problem. But there is now a development in recent years where in even the color spectrum of the LEDs starts to represent more and more the natural light. Um, so you see that there is a development there happening. LEDs also made it now possible for more and more microscopes to be operated by battery, which is important, of course, in the um, in the field of education where you do not have a power supply um, on every table, and so you can now use battery-operated microscopes. But you see, all of those developments are really not related to the microscope optics itself, because uh, we've already reached theoretically maximum that is possible. One of the things where I still hope that there is going to be development happening, we already have the technology, but it has um, kind of, it's a little bit slow in, in kind of going into the consumer market. And that is the whole issue with the imaging. Um, the microscope cameras, yes, they are, they are available. I think they're pretty expensive. Yeah. And, um, some of those microscope cameras are simply not able to deliver the, you know, to fulfill the expectations that I, for example, I have. Um, many microscope cameras uh, have a USB 2.0 um, connection and uh, essentially they are too slow to take uh, high quality videos. Um, the, the connection is simply too slow. So you see there are still um, possibilities for development there. And I do not think that it's a money issue. I don't think that it's an issue of, of lack of technology, but simply I think that the market is too small. And um, those people who want to have those devices because they need it because of research, they're going to pay for it anyway. Um, and I think that this is a little bit a, a question of, of, of market. Um, one interesting development that happened over the last 10, 15 years, um, and this is, is that uh, the availability of generally low cost microscopes, um, when I say low cost, a couple of hundred euros or dollars, um, you get already comparatively surprisingly decent and good quality microscopes um, for their price, <laughs> obviously. Um, and uh, I remember um, 20 years ago, if you wanted to have a decent microscope, <clears throat> you had to go to, to one of the big uh, brands and the, the costs were really um, astronomical. Um, so there was development there um, um, as well. Um, so I would say um, all of these developments are related not so much uh, to the improvement of, of, of image quality. Yeah? So yeah, I, I would say, I hope that this has given you a little bit of my um, as an insight here. Lack of need, mention a few possible issues. I would say different uh, um, target groups, research, for example, um, compared to hobbyists um, and generally the, the still relatively small market of, of microscopes. And I'm still waiting um, for uh, the companies to make different microscopic techniques available for the, for amateur um, use. For example, phase contrast, DIC, for example. Um, yeah, is still very expensive. Um, and I don't understand why, because phase contrast, for example, the optics um, are not so different from the regular uh, bright field optics. Um, so I do not understand why there is such a big price difference. But I think, again, it's a question of market um, and of price politics, because those people who need phase contrast primarily in research um, yeah, they are willing to pay uh, for that. Yeah, same for DIC, um, you know, where um, the, it has not yet reached uh, the amateur market um, yet. So maybe there are going to be developments there, and maybe in a couple of years, um, yeah, it's going to uh, again look different. 
I think I'm going to quit it now. I hope that this was informative. Do leave your comments uh, below. Or maybe you have uh, also your own opinions and different views um, on this issue. Uh, again, thank you very much uh, for the question. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.